Welcome back, Mathletes. So our lesson for today is all about dividing decimals. We are halfway through our chapter three. So far we've multiplied decimals with whole numbers and then decimals times decimals. Today we'll be dividing decimals with whole numbers. And then our next lesson will be decimals divided with decimals. We will be um, using the long division strategy in this video. <clears throat> and then we'll be talking about where where do we place the decimal in our answer? We will still use estimation to check two things. One, that we divide it okay, and two, that we put the decimal in the right spot. Because we know that if we have the numbers three, four, a decimal in the front makes it 34 cents. A decimal in between makes it three holes and four tenths parts. But a decimal at the end here is going to make it 34 whole dollars. So our decimal placement is really something that's important to our value. So it's something we should check for. A couple of key vocabulary words here when working with division. If your expression is set up in a traditional format like 6 divided by 3, the 6 is your dividend. This value represents your total. This is important when we start working with real world situations and story problems, because you'll need to write an expression first. So the total is the dividend that you are going to be splitting up. The divisor is how we're going to split that total. What kind of groupings are we looking for here? And then the quotient is just fancy for your answer. So when um, people do the strategy of partial quotients, what they're doing is finding part of the answer until they have found all the parts of the answer, and then they find the whole answer. When you rewrite it, your total dividend ends up going inside your long division symbol. How we are splitting that is our divisor. That part goes outside of our division symbol. If you're using a number like maybe a 12 and you're not quite comfortable with count bys of 12s or multiples of 12s, we can use a multiplication chart to help us with long division also. You would be looking for the divisor number on a multiplication chart. Another strategy is if you have some kind of crazy divisor, like maybe 64, and you're like, I don't know how to count by 64s, either make a mini 64 count by chart or bump this to maybe a 60. And then you can count by sixes with zeros on the end. So one group of 60, two groups would be the same as two groups of six with a zero. Three groups would be that eight, 18 with a zero. Six, 12, 18, four groups is your 24 with a zero. So we can use estimation to help us kind of um, with a tricky divisor as well. And then our quotients always go up top when we're doing a long division method. So how exactly do we divide decimals with whole numbers? Well, our textbook gives us some information here at the top of page 128. In words, they tell us, and then in numbers, they show us. So we know in math, we like to see it, but we also like to hear it as well. Sometimes though, the telling doesn't really make sense to us because it's not spoken in our language. So if these words say, place the decimal point in the quotient, that's really just talking about put it in the answer. Where in the answer? Above where it is in the problem. So in the total dividend, which is this number down here, the decimal just goes straight up into the answer spot. And then the directions say, divide as you would with whole numbers. That just means however you would be doing your division strategy, do that. So this video is about long division. So that will be the strategy that we use today. They show us with numbers as well, how the decimal just kind of goes right up above it. So if things start to get a little bit shifted or wonky with your division, I recommend that you create some kind of columns. Maybe turn your notebook sideways so you get those blue lines for your numbers to stay nice and organized. How exactly do we know where to place the decimal then? Well, because this video is all about the long division method, we're going to look at example one on our textbook page 128 to figure out how do we know where to put the decimal and when we look here they tell us place the decimal in the quotient above the decimal from the dividend so if the 7.6 was our dividend total that we're splitting the decimal was between the seven and the six 
it goes straight up. So instead of it being a 19, it's really going to be a 1 and 9 tenths. If the decimal had been somewhere like this in our problem, and we came up with some kind of answers like um, 25, this decimal is just going to go straight up and split those numbers. If the decimal had been in a different spot, like let's say it's between the 1 and the 4, now it's just going to float up and it's going to sit here, making it really like a quarter or 25 hundredths in value. So on your handout, we have these steps and you can refer to these as often as you need to. If your number is not, if your problem, I'm sorry, is not written out in your long division format, you'll want to rewrite that problem. So if we had something like 15 and 2 tenths being divided into six groups, we would just want to rewrite it with our six divisor out here and our 15.2 dividend inside here. Once it's all set up and written, now we're ready to divide. We have to keep going though until we have nothing left to give. So we're not allowed to have remainders in sixth grade. We'll look at some that have remainders and then we'll talk about what in the world do we do with them? Because our goal is to end up with nothing left to split. We will place our decimal and our strategy is just to drag that decimal straight up into the quotient wherever it was in the dividend. So keep your numbers nice and aligned. And then we'll do an estimation just to check that we divided okay. And then our decimal ended up in a good spot. So this is my example. I'd like you to copy this onto your handout as I work through it with the long division strategy here. The first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this problem. So if I take the dividend total of 13.6, I'm going to be splitting it into groups of twos. Now I'm ready to divide. I'm going to pretend like that decimal is not even there, and I'm going to fill in these blanks with digits. Two does not go into one. I like to mark that spot with a zero. It helps keep all the rest of the numbers from like shifting over into that zone and kind of taking up the space and hogging it. And some people like to do um, zero times two is zero, and then you subtract and you get a one, and then you bring down your next number. But that's really an extra step because notice, what we have is a 13, and we could have had that at the beginning. So if it doesn't go into the first digit at all, slide over and look at the second digit with the first digit together. I know that two does go into 13. If I count by twos, I can say uh, 12, and that's the closest to 13 that I can get without going over. So that was six groups. Six groups of two was 12, but I'm left with one. And I'm not done. I bring down my next digit with long division and I divide one more time. When I move on to my next number here and I brought down this six, I'm going to place my answer here above the six because now I'm using that digit. How many twos go into 16? Eight groups. Eight groups of two is exactly 16, leaving me with no remainder. So we want to divide until we have no remainder. And we'll know we're done when we have nothing left to split. Now that our division is all complete, it's time to place the decimal in our answer. So I'll look back at the original uh, dividend. It was placed here between the 3 and the 6. And if I float it straight up into my answer, it's going to be placed between the 6 digit and the 8 digit, making my answer 6 and 8 tenths. I can estimate to check that 13 and 6 tenths divided by 2 is indeed 6 and 8 tenths. I know that a 13.6 is pretty close to a 14, which is compatible and evenly divided by 2 because it's even, making it about 7. And since a 6.8 is pretty close to 7, I know that that is my correct answer. We'll give you one to try. Make sure you've copied this onto your handout. So you have a good example of a long division strategy with decimal division. On your handout, please solve this one. Remember, you're going to divide until you have no remainder. We'll pause the video while you work. 
So I have this set up ready to walk you through it so you can check and see how you did. The first thing is, is that 4 does not go into 1 at all, but 4 does go into 12. So it goes in 3 whole times using all 12 and leaving me with no remainder, but I'm not done yet because I do have another digit that I'm working with here. So I'm going to bring down the 4. My value for that one's going to go here above the 4, keep everything nice and neat. 4 goes into 4 one time, which uses all 4 of my leftovers. I have nothing left and I'm all out of numbers up here, so I know that I'm done dividing. Now I'm ready to place that decimal. So in my original dividend total, I see that the decimal sat here and straight up into my answer, the decimal is going to sit there. If you get your numbers kind of misaligned, you might end up accidentally dragging the decimal up in front of the three or after the one. And we know that 31 cents and $31 are not the same as three and one tenth. So just make sure that everything stays nice and neat so that you can just drag that decimal straight on up into your quotient. I can estimate to check. I know that a 12 and a four divide very compatibly together to give me about three. And a 3.1 is pretty doggone close to a three. So I know that three and one tenth is my answer. How'd you do? Did you divide okay? Did you place that decimal straight up into your answer? Did you keep everything nice and neat? Here's my next problem. I'm gonna be using long division to find 22 and 2 tenths split into six piles. So I'm gonna rewrite this. Put my spots here for my digits in my answer and then ready to rock and roll. Six does not go into two at all, but it does go into 22. I can pull out three groups without going over, which uses 18. Do a little bit of borrowing here when I subtract. Not done yet though, I'm ready to bring down my next digit. Six goes into 42 seven whole times, which is all 42. And I've got nothing left. So we divide until we don't have any remainder. No remainders are allowed. And now we're ready to place that decimal. So we're just going to drag that decimal straight up from our quotient doo, 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 into, sorry, from our dividend into our quotient. So three and seven tenths is going to be my answer or my quotient to this division expression. I can estimate to check. I know that this could be about a 20 but 20 and six are not compatible. They don't work very well together. So I'm gonna bump the six down to a five, which is still pretty close. 20 divided by five is four, and four is pretty close to a three and seven tenths. So I know that my division is probably pretty good, but I also know that I placed my decimal in a good spot. Here's the next one for you to try. We'll pause the video while you work to find the quotient of 59 and 5 tenths divided by seven holes. So I've got it all rewritten here. We're gonna divide until we can't divide anymore. Seven goes into five, doesn't happen, but it does go into 59. Seven groups of eight is 56, which is the closest to 59 that I can get. I'm gonna subtract bring down my next digit because I'm not done yet. And I'm gonna divide again. Seven goes into 35, exactly five whole times, which uses all of our extras, leaving me with no remainder so I know my division is done. But I also know that 85 is not my answer because I haven't placed my decimal yet. So the decimal is gonna go straight from the dividend up into the quotient and stay there making this eight and five tenths or $8.50 if you were thinking money. I'm going to estimate to check. I either should find something that works well with a seven or something that divides well with a 60 because that's pretty close to 59 and five tenths. And I'm going to use a 60 and a six because to me, those are very compatible and easy to work with. So the answer would be about 10 and an eight and five tenths is pretty close to about 10. So if somebody said, what are you like, 10? And you're like, well, I'm eight and a half. It's kind of like the same thing, isn't it? Let's give you another one to try here. 
Actually, that was yours. How'd you do on that one? Did you divide okay? Did you place your decimal okay? Our next skill to learn is what happens if we have a remainder because we have to keep going. But what happens if we can't keep going because we ran out of numbers? Well, we're going to look at example two on textbook page 129 because it does discuss using a long division method and what to do there. So in our example, they show us and they tell us to insert a zero when you run out. So originally we had a 4.38. But at the end of our division, we still had six remainder. We can't just say remainder six. That's not allowed anymore. We're going to split it up. So I want you to think about it as being if we had um, two people and they were sharing $3, well, they can each get a buck, but there's still a dollar left over. Well, wouldn't it make sense to split that dollar into coins and then keep sharing? or break a dime into nickels or pennies and give everybody a little bit of extra. That's kind of the idea here. We give the value or a dividend a zero, bring down the zero, and we keep splitting more. So we're just gonna place a zero with the remainder, and then we're just gonna keep going and going until we have no remainder left. So here's an example. Notice that I will be using a zero with my remainder. So this is a bonus step for us to do here. So I'm going to rewrite it just like before. I'm going to work to fill in these spaces here. Five doesn't go into three, but it does go into 34. It happens, let's see, six groups. Seven groups would be too big because I only have 34. I'm going to subtract. I'm going to bring down my next digit and divide again. 5 goes into 48 nine whole times. Nine groups of 5 is 45. I have three remainder, but I'm all out of numbers. So this is where that extra step happens. We're going to put a remainder on, or a zero with our remainder because what we've done is we've just made it be 34 and 8 tenths is now 34 and 80 hundredths, or it's like 8 dimes, 80 pennies, same thing. Bring that zero down and divide again. My answer is going to be extended by a digit now because I'm using another spot here. 5 goes into 30, exactly 6 whole groups. Six whole groups is 30, and now I have no remainder left. You'll know you're done dividing when you have no remainder left. So I'm ready to place my decimal. I look at the original problem. It was sitting here between the four and the eight. I'm just going to drag it up here, making this six and 96 hundredths. Or if five people were sharing $34.80, they would each end up with $6.96. I can estimate to check. This is about 35. 35 works nicely with a five, making it about seven. And since $6.96 is pretty close to seven bucks, I know that it checks out okay. We'll give you one to try that also will include adding an extra zero. We'll pause the video while you work. So let's check and see how you did here. I have it all set up and rewritten, and now I'm ready to start dividing. Four goes into six once. One group of four is four. But when I subtract, I have two remainder, but I'm not done yet because I have another digit to bring on down and split again. Four goes into 22, five groups. Five groups of four, though, is only 20, leaving me with two extra, but I'm all out of digits. This is where that extra zero gets added to the end, making $6 in two dimes, the same thing as $6.20. We bring that zero down so that we have more to split, and now we split one more time. Four goes into 25 whole times which used all 20 and now I'm done because I have no remainder. I'm gonna place my decimal by taking it from my dividend straight up into my quotient. It was here, 
and it's straight up above here, making it like $1.55 or one and 55 hundredths. So if I estimate it, I would either bump this up to an eight with a four, or I could take this down maybe to a four with a four, meaning it's somewhere between one and two holes. So since $1.55 is somewhere between one and two holes, I know that my answer has been checked. One and 55 hundredths is my final quotient. How'd you do? Did you get the right digits, 155? And did you place that decimal correctly? How about that zero? Did you understand how to work with that zero there? My next example here splits $5.04 between five people. So five goes into five one whole time, which means everybody's going to get a dollar. Bring on down my zero and divide again. Now this is the tricky part of long division that some people forget this step or make a mistake on. We have to divide here because we brought down a number, but five doesn't go into zero at all. So we fill it in with doesn't happen, and that's a zero. You can work it out and do zero times five and subtract, but either way we have nothing. And we're gonna bring down our next number and go again. Five goes into four, it doesn't happen. Fill it in with a zero, but it can't go again because I don't have any more numbers. Looks like I'm gonna have to add a bunch of nothing bring it on down another spot in my answer and divide again so finally i have a number that can actually be divided five goes into 40 eight groups which means i've used all of my leftovers finally and i have nothing left so my digits are a one zero zero eight but i better place that decimal from the original dividend straight up into the quotient, it's gonna sit right after the one. Making this value one and eight thousandths, or if five people split five dollars and four cents, they would each get one full dollar, but they couldn't even get a penny because eight thousandths is not even a penny. It would be like a piece of a penny, which is weird. One last one here for you to try. We'll pause the video while you split up 10 and 6 tenths between five groups. So let's see how you did. Got it rewritten. I'm gonna go five into one, doesn't happen, but five does go into 10 twice. Two groups of five is 10. So far I have no leftovers, but I'm not done dividing. I'm gonna bring down my next digit and divide again. Five goes into six, one group. One times five is five with one remainder. Now I'm not allowed to have a remainder. So if I do have a remainder, I have to give a zero to my dividend, bring down the zero. So now it looks like I have 10 left to share. It's like one dime, 10 pennies, same thing. So five goes into 10 twice using all of what was left over until I have nothing left. So I've got the digits two, one, two, but I better place that decimal. So from the original dividend total, straight up into the answer spot, sits it here, making it two and 12 hundredths. We can estimate to check. I would call this value about a 10, and a 10 works really nicely with a five. They're very compatible. So we're looking for about two as an answer. And since $2 and 12 cents is about two bucks, I know that it checks out okay. How'd you do? Did you divide okay? Did you know what to do when we had a remainder but we were all out of numbers? And did you get that decimal placed into the right spot? So the last thing for you to do is to practice, 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 because we know that practice makes better. So you'll be dividing with decimals using your long division strategy. This is available on our math class calendar for you to practice. Or if you're more comfortable, there are some practice problems in our textbook as well. And the whole point is that answers are included for some of those problems. So you're able to check and see how am I doing?
So put in some really good quality effort and practice here to make sure that you're good with the idea of dividing with decimals. And then later this week, we'll move on to dividing decimals with more decimals. Happy practicing.